334. Here we are. There's news. We have games. Finally, we have some reads on the meta. Yiska, we're here. We're looking at some stuff. We're analyzing things. We're crouching tactfully with tactics. <laughs> Rap God? <laughs> you, I mean, I feel like tactfully, you wanted to say, you know, tactic tactically, but then I fudged it and then, you know, but tried to recover. You know, you like out, those my brain also stalled saying tactically. <laughs> Therefore, I can now not condemn you. <laughs> Uncondemnable, but layoffable. There have been layoffs. Will they affect us? Talent announcements are out. Did your favorite streamer get picked? Profits retired. Um, and the schedule. I, I know that Overwatch has been very, very good in the past, and it's continuing to be extremely good at promoting their own c content. Um, so I will beat that into you until you all tune in to watch. Hopefully you all know, but if you don't know, we're going to make sure you do. Yiska, how are things? How are we? Um, pretty decent. Uh, last, last day before a long weekend. Nice. Um, did, a, did a little little bit of fasting last week three days yeah I was, I, was, I was noticing the uh the, the the live journal yeah and any takeaways any large i think it was lessons learned pretty enjoyable day one i realized i don't notice hunger that much i think it was not that hard the hardest thing really for me was to uh to see how often the impulse of I'm bored, let's put something in my mouth uh, hits me. So that yeah. was that was interesting to just notice. Um, day three was actually the best one. That was a great day. I, uh, also, just weather was nice. I was able to go for a long walk. It felt like, okay, this is, this is of course placebo as fuck, but it felt like everything <laughs> was a little bit more vibrant. Okay. Uh, and then... The really annoying day was actually the refeeding day, where you can't go hard uh, on the calories, right? Ah, uh, right. You gotta yeah. start with the broths, and then the broth is too salty for your mouth, and like the osmotic pressure of the salt just like it feels like everything in your face is being pulled together, and then like you you slowly approach, um, <clears throat> you slowly approach the 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 tough foods while reading on the internet how refeeding syndrome can kill you therefore you freak out and it's uh it's it, that wasn't the most fun of the uh, part of the experience but i i kind of want to do it once a quarter maybe twice a year we'll see okay okay interesting do you feel like more lucid do you feel like agile mentally yes um i would okay. say like if okay so this is a weird thing that I, I tried ketogenic diets in the past and I actually yeah. couldn't couldn't say the mental clarity that people describe was at all true. I got keto flu but like yeah. I oh, keto flu I, I did the taste in my mouth once again also this time uh, was awful um, but like the, the benefits of it at least for the duration that I did so I, I don't think like full keto, never more than four weeks, um, really didn't happen for me. Like my, my mm. brain was always not do it, managing well. And then for this one, I actually felt like there was something coming back in terms of mm. clarity, in terms of finding words quicker, in terms of um, it, both in spoken and written language. Um, enjoyment was up, which could coincide a little bit with the weather, to be fair. And uh, yeah, it was a very different experience than um, when I did similar things in the past. I did fasts before, uh, but I, I did them a little differently. This time I didn't, didn't go to, through too many hoops. I just threw a couple of electrolytes and then just drank water. Okay. Really, huh. I really like didn't, like everyone else was like, Okay, so one of my problems was was the taste in my mouth, and I was like, just chew gum. And I'm like, no, that's calories. I wanted to, I don't know, like... You're, you're going full, I, you know, I gotta go raw dog. Yeah, there's... Okay. there's I feel that, yeah. 
I, I don't know. Like if there's a little bit of a halfway, I'm instantly less committed. It's it's got to be clinically. It's got to be min maxed. Okay. Like yeah. if it's min max, then I can stick to it. Then it's not a problem. Mm. Even like the you know like the um, zero sugar drinks, they still have probably on a liter. They probably still have like thirty calories. I didn't want to have sure. that. Right. Like I didn't. Then um, I read into like coffee and how that uh, there's certain liver activities there that are strictly speaking not um, causing the same effects. So. Yeah, once again. Like, I did a, a bunch of reading uh, the day before and then during um, because realistically, like, if, if there was any uh, anything that made me reconsider, like, not eating for 18 hours or 24 hours wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Uh, so. mm. But yeah, I feel like even just doing it for a day uh, seems seems wild when you're just like a normal guy but yeah. it's really not a big deal at all like you're totally capable but once again this is not medical advice and you might have a very different <laughs> physiology you're not a medical podcast i'm also neither of us are doctors like yes, yes, you yes. know what actually also was really fun was the first run back where you know like in just three days i don't know like if if you you lost weight as well, right? I don't know if you did yeah. exercise during it, but there oh, no. is a gradual improvement where, like, sometimes you just, like, have these benchmarks in your head where you go, oh, yeah, this feels a lot easier than it used to be. Now, yeah. this time, I must have dropped a lot of weight, also water weight, uh, in those three days alone. So the, the contrast to the experience of running on the day I started the fast and then the day after I finished the fast was wild because suddenly like just a couple of kilograms were just not on me you know I, like yeah. i put the the fat vest or the water vest off and i really noticed that during the one um didn't necessarily translate into performance super well also probably because um i just w was still depleted from the fast uh, mm -hmm. still not eating more than 1400 calories on the day of the run so um it wasn't. It wasn't like a performance increase, but you. It actually, you did notice that it was less weight to carry around. Sure. Yeah, I think that's like something. Um, personal trainers, or at least you know, some of these like weight loss shows tend to do really well with, is like having the contestants or just you know, uh, you know, the person that they're training, um, have a tangible thing to either carry at some point or to experience. To have that like brain trigger of like oh this isn't just like a number that's fluctuating this is actually like my body like i'm losing like all this weight that i have to carry around now that my personal trainers are like the, the can you know the show is having me like carry around where it's just like wow i used to be this heavy that's crazy like i'm noticing now there's a difference because this is what i was and you know within the three the three months that maybe we've been on this show or i've been with this trainer you know, I've lost all this weight and now I'm I'm kind of experiencing what three months ago would have felt like. And it's there is this physicality to it that is like, oh, wow, this is like really nice. And I I think that's like a big thing on getting people to buy into that stuff is like not having it be amorphous and letting it be giving them some kind of like tangible proof that like you have uh, progressed. Right. That's a big thing. Progression right. is. I, I would say I didn't I didn't necessarily do it for the weight loss. It was more about the challenge sure. and like seeing the, if you could do it. The potential clarity that comes with it and just the effect. It was mostly curiosity. Novelty carried me through sure. this experience. Like how the well, my body react, feel, you know. Are you how do you feel know it like when you were on that run and you were like, oh, wow, this is like different, but like in kind of like a nice way. Maybe I'm not running faster, but this is like different. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing something good for myself like that that had to have done something for you. Right. Like that was kind of like a little like I would right. say joyous moment, but it was a happy. Right. Right. Yes. That. Yeah. But also Not the main point. But, you know, it helps. It's nice. It's also like. To be honest, like the, the also just the experience of like I haven't eaten in three days. I can totally mm -hmm. go on this, you know, 10 mile walk and it's not a problem, right? Like it, it sure. didn't feel like energy was really depleted. Um, the, the thing is like th certain things feel different, right? Like you have certain 
bodily sensations that you don't have when you're eating, right? Um, just Definitely. the way how how it feels in mm -hmm. all parts of the body. But yeah, that that novelty, just like getting to explore these, like how does my, you know, like um, how do my muscles feel in my legs, in my calves? Like how's my energy level? Does my mouth feel like right now? Right? Sure. Um, yeah, it was great. And then also just like resetting the sensitivity to, to certain uh, flavors is huge. Dude, mm -hmm. that broth hit. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was delicious, even though I will say it was a little too salty. So, yeah, no. Overall, like a very rewarding experience. Um, and yeah, overall, that pretty decent. Uh, if yeah, if I'm I'm probably going to look forward to uh, doing some doing experiments again. in the in the yeah. past. Yeah, and doing it again. Yeah. Okay. 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 I uh, I will not be joining you. Um, I enjoy board eating. Um, and I will continue to do so. I made muffins this weekend. Uh, on a fatter note. Um, funny story though. Muffins typically will call for milk. I was at my girlfriend's place. Didn't have any milk. So what did I do? I improvised because we overcome this podcast. We are t tactical. We are masterful. We have tact and strategy and by we lactate by and therefore it, solve that issue. Exactly. You know, I, I figured it I figured it out for my goddamn self. No. Um it was a weird smorgasbord of all kinds of fatty liquids. Um there was oil, there was yogurt, there was hot water, and it was, yeah, it worked. It worked out. They were a little pale looking, but, you know, tasted good. Yeah? Was the taste not? No, it tasted fine. It was a little, like, it was a little bland, because I don't think I put enough in, but, yeah. Did it, you just it, figure it that much. out yourself without Googling? Oh, yeah, definitely. No, I, I completely, like, free balled it. I was like, all right, well, I'm screwed. Um, Let's just see, let's wing it and see what happens. Really? So I was like, all right. You didn't Google this? This no, oh. this is most definitely an issue that people have encountered and have found. Oh, one hundred percent, they have. But I was already like panicked, and I was just like, "All right, shit, we got we got yogurt. We'll we'll take a little bit of that. We'll add a little water. We'll add a little like cooking, you know, some some vegetable oil. We'll whisk that up to get to like a milky, you know, consistency. Top it off with some more water. Put that in and take it from there. And we covered it in sugar, and that's a it worked out. Is is that Michigan MacGyver? Is that what it is like? Ah, uh, you you can call me whatever you want. You know, you can call me Michigan MacGyver. You can call me Mystic Mac. You can call me the real Hell's Kitchen. Jesus, that's right. Hell's, you know, Hell's Kitchen only has one chef, but here at Tactical Crouch, we have multiple chefs. That's right. Episode three thirty four is brought to you by our wonderful patron chefs producers but you know who you are uh battle cry brief i'm being bronze babu hell lotion rex and volume and sugar higher and youtube members i am drw brother adam l ice and jello fire element six and a k like a kalishnikov prophet we always thought he'd be here we always thought he'd work sadly he's retired mic drop it is jokes aside it is quite sad it is sad to see that you know uh, with the state of uh Overwatch Prophet uh, doesn't have whether yeah we were kind of talking prior to the show you know uh, whether it be an offer uh, that was competitive enough with what he was looking for or you know just isn't isn't there anymore you know it's 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 sad uh, you somebody who's given quite a bit of their life uh, been quite a bit not quite a bit but like been the face of of quite a few eras. Um, led the GOAT discussion for a long time, whether, you know, Timmy's in the chat, want to believe it or not. We're here to learn you're smart. Um, yeah, it's it sucks that, you know, 2024 is, is very likely to be profitless. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild, actually. Um, they are, like, I just did a video with, um, for Gigi where we talk mm -hmm. about the reasons for retirement. And 
Yeah, the writing of this is all, of course, on the wall, but yeah, like yeah. Th this shit actually fucked me up a little bit because it, it felt like such a accompanying story to my personal career. To me. Sure. Um, also, like, in large parts, I think I would have not developed that. Like, a lot of people really got into the runaway story. Yeah. Um, I don't think I ever was that big of a pink sweater guy. What did grab me was Cheshire and Prophet. Sure. And um, I also felt like, of course, like during season one, I was one of the louder voices saying he was ridiculously underrated. I remain that. Him not getting an MVP nomination that year is fucking criminal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will, I totally will take all of those checks to the bank. I'm pretty sure, like, even just after season four, uh, I wrote an article about this guy. Let, let me see if I can find it. Um, that's basically like talking about how profit is likely to become our uh, faker. Wait. Uh, oh, yeah, I think it was on Winston's lap. Let's hope that this is still oh, up. Um, that's a that's a tough one. You never, you never, you never really truly step into journalism until uh, you you hope that one of your favorite pieces is still alive somewhere. Yeah, that's always that's always a fun experience. Um, fun fact: I'm going to caveat this big asterisk here because yes, Timmy's in the chat. You can uh, you can pick through this and, and cherry pick this. Uh, but Profit only has one postseason award in the typical award ballot T-Mobile playoff MVP does not count in that. He was not you know, picked to win that if memory serves. That was just something that was awarded to after the match. Um, so there was no yeah, he, was he was obviously on ballots before but he was never selected correct. to be you know, he was only once ever selected to be a roll star more damage in 2022 and that is it yeah and he had the grand final finals mvp but like correct. that's yes that's yeah. practically that not. that to me is uh it, it is not accurate of this player's career and i think uh i th i think you can go back through the years and and maybe make those arguments um it, it it is a little it is a little odd. I'll put it that way. It's a little strange, especially with some of the ballots that we've seen in the past. Have to wonder if people either who are given a definition of what they should be voting for or um, are a little bit more um, how to say unbiased. Um, maybe profit doesn't you know squeak in an extra couple awards for having a. Such an impact on the game. I think having one postseason award is, is pretty pretty sad. Um, yeah, I I found it like it. This is an article I wrote in 2018, right after they mm. won the championship, and I got to interview him briefly. I think I s sent uh, Susie a couple of questions in, and sure. Um, basically, like the. <laughs> The the article, of course, is called "You Kept Sleeping on Profit." You woke up on this dream world, um, mm -hmm. an obnoxious Real tweet ones, no? that yep. I kept resummoning. But I got mileage of that out of that sucker. Okay, did um, you can see it on screen, by the way. And basically, I went through his history, how he fucking dunked on Huxall in that Apex Season Four final. And then the last part of the article, I'm going to milk you this one, Joe. Like, I'm just going to take our victory lap. This is, I'm going to insert myself into this story and, <laughs> and say He's this. He's self-inserting? He's self-inserting? Watch out, everybody. Because, like, this was very obvious to me that this player had no. disqualities at that time, right? So I wrote, A God in the Making was the headline. And then he's a big game player and has been the best on stage at every grand final he has played in his career. If you don't want to count stage finals, Prophet has indeed never lost a single one, but was MVP in every single 
final. Profit will only turn 19 in November, making him one of the youngest players in the Overwatch League. And even the most pessimistic judges of age in esports have to agree that he's, uh, he potentially still has years left to build his legacy. Through his flexibility in Hero Pool, Profit has reached escape velocity from meta gravity, making him unlikely to be rendered ineffective by future metas. Profit has formed a bond with Gesture. Here we start losing. Another top player in this room. I mean, at the, you're not wrong for the time. And their synergy has no rival, a key to success in a team game like Overwatch. As a professional player, Profit is goal oriented and pointed to achieve more, making it unlikely he will c succumb to complacency. If one wants to be there for the birth of a god and to be a witness to what may become the faker, flash, or forest of our esport, he ought to look no further than Profit, as he made himself undeniable and he has all the foundations of a legend. You kept sleeping on Prophet. You woke up in this dream world. Based. Nerd chill Je says. Jesha left me after season three. I feel like everything else uh, was pretty. I, am I crazy? I feel like he left you after season two. No, season three, sure. he was fucking Roadhog in the finals, no? I mean, yeah, but... Yes, like, he wasn't great during this season, but he still showed up, and they... Just, man's still fucking... Oh, stop, <laughs> man. You're, you, you, the homie takes a couple long flanks on a hero that is designed no, to no, hit he picks. Was, that, okay. and, he, and this kid nuts. No, like, no, 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 no. Come no, on, no. man. That, it, he was, like, consensus one of the better ones uh, at the time. Super was up there. Uh, I think DK, and then he switched to Zarya almost immediately, right? Yeah, yeah, and he farmed everybody. Um, but generally speaking, like Jesho was one of the better hogs, and that was one of the reasons they got to the final. Other than Profit, of course, who all who was also farming during that time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like Jesho during season one was, of, of course, be a beast, and I, I remain. He could have remained oh. similarly competitive to someone like Fearless if he had that killer instinct in him. But Speaking I will of, say, yeah. as soon as that fucker start, started buying like the Balenciaga shit, I should have known, man. Where, where, where is every, Where's the press? Where are all the 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 Overwatch Timmies, the over the the Korean fans? You know, this motherfucker says that it's it's capitalism that made Gesture suck, and I still get pilloried for calling Fearless remotely lazy. Okay, see how it is. Double standard. Uh, yes, also, you did point out, I did not put it in the show notes, but Fearless did announce his retirement as well. Another yes. great, hanging it up. It is a, you know, we talk about changing the guards for a long time. Passing of torches, whatnot. Um, it's that one. Wild selection, by the way. It's, it's also, like, the... <sighs> yeah, I... I once again, like we told people this was going to happen with the region law, yeah. right? There were only going to be so many esports organizations. There were not going to be many in uh, South Korea. Yep. And those that are capable of paying a salary, very few would be able to have import slots. And of those having import slots, literally only two have picked up South Korean tanks in Smurf yep. and in yep. someone. And you could argue Fearless could be your second pick. I think Junkbug and Krusty decided against it. So it's Smurf again. Yeah. And it's wild that it happened that way. Right? Like, I, oh, think, I think there's a world where without the region lock factors that some of those unannounced orcs were, might, might have looked uh, towards Fearless. But alas... They like there's there's no room for these players left in these few organizations that have the finances to back that up. So yeah, it's it's a pretty sad story. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, as as bitter as, as that might be to say, um, it's a it's a f thankful. Like, I feel like a lot of these folks would have kept going against their better judgment and their... Sure, sure. Right there. What really will help them out going forward, 
they would have sacrificed a lot here. And therefore, like, kind of being forced into retirement for a lot of those guys is maybe not the worst for them personally, right? Uh, especially mm -hmm. with mandatory military service coming up and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh... I feel like it, it's, you know, if we were going to look at this from like a novel perspective, novel being the book, not something new. Um, there is something kind of complete about Fearless's journey, mm. you know, kind of coming in, you know, doing the Shanghai shuffle, shuffling to Owen 42. I think for him, it was like Owen 20 or something, because I think he was part of that, that Korean, you know, injection and just didn't result in anything. Um, you know, got sent back to contenders, climbed his way up, won a championship, did a bunch of World Cup shit, you know, like did the gambit, did the whole damn thing and and you know I think has a has a career to show for it. Um you talk about there not being room. Um let me be very clear. I, I don't think Yiska means that uh, you know, Fearless would not be an upgrade to let me adjust my glasses here, folks. Peppy, Jasmine, Neolgaru, and Gurum. Uh, me, me thinks that he means that there is not, you know, a competitive offer or an, a, a, a room for a player of that caliber to be on a team that has any resemblance of being within the top positions uh, in Korea or abroad, right? Very difficult to, uh, to, to kind of get in a word edgewise with that um and yeah I, I i to put myself in his shoes to empathize a little bit man's done it all he's gone from the bottom not to completely glaze him like my guy drake laying in bed just saying um he's done it all so hopefully he goes on to bigger and better things love to see him on the broadcast would love to see him maybe you know take the the role of miro you know Miro's kicking around doing some coaching last I checked. Uh, this is, you know, maybe last year at this point. I think he's doing stuff with like Starlight, something like that, some other Korean org. Um, but is, you know, you saw him on the, the broadcast a couple of times. I feel like he's got insight to share. So I think that'd be really dope. I think he could uh, provide a lot to, you know, some of these younger tank players that, God forbid there be a Winston meta. I, I wouldn't want anybody else standing behind me, you know? Very few people that you can kind of give you the ins and outs so who knows maybe somebody picks him up brings him out of retirement for uh for playoffs i i i do think that is a possibility uh we talked about this previously but i do think orgs are going to slow roll into lan um and i wouldn't be shocked if uh once an unnamed fnrgfe style team in na you know makes shockingly makes you know a lan without um uh, you know a partner or somebody to pay their way somebody comes in scoops them up gives them some funds maybe they you know maybe they call up all fearless who knows um i don't know how legal that is but i'm just saying you know trying to give some hope um but yeah I mean, not, not the, the guy is news. very likely heading to military service, so this is going to be challenging. I would imagine so. 18 months. Yeah, he, he, I think the, the retirement post actually talked about military service. So, ah, okay. Um, of course, like I think between 18 and 16 months in South Korea. So Not me just reading headlines again. Whoops. Um, That's to be fair, that like, Rana came back. That's one. True. Runner did come back. OG came back. True. Right, so there are a couple. Possible. Um, the f the True. thing is, like, once you're, once you're out, and once you're, basically went to your, um, AAA meeting for Overwatch. <sighs> it it feels like you probably it's probably. Are we talking AA or ARP? Are you trying to save me again? No, no. I mean AAA. The alcoholic, you know. What's what's oh, the abbreviation? Not, not not the American Association of Retired Persons. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I knew that was not something that was gonna land, but I was like, maybe it will. I don't. I uh, <laughs> never heard of that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's maybe maybe ever. when. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, he, he uh, folks, audio listeners, he's not actively playing. Um any kind of game on the side this is just his filter slamming shut yes um 
we will get him on a game and we will get him i feel like that's that's our version of hot ones is we just get yiska to like play a game and distract himself so that like the other half of his brain can speak for once yes it's usually pretty fun it's a good time um yes there are some retirements if you've ever wished for the overwatch league to die because quote we can go back to the alienware monthly melees end quote this is also what you uh you sow so hello reaper here congratulations and no not the shotgun wielding spinny cool guy right not the reaper character the grim reaper um congratulations you have uh the, the monkey paw ultimately curled twice. Congrats. Well done. Um, and for a third time, another round of layoffs. Maybe this is the third finger on the monkey paw. Face it. Laying off, I think, what, I, I think I remember seeing about 900 people. 15% of its staff. No, I think. Was it? Was I'm it misquoting. I, I could, there's been so many different layoffs, so I'm not entirely too sure. Maybe I'm making, mixing up some numbers. was, but. I believe, yeah, it was the PlayStation one. Oh, okay. Forgive me. Um, 15% of its uh, work staff for ESL Face It Group uh, being laid off, obviously. Yeah, unbeknownst to maybe people living under a rock for Overwatch or would uh, choose not to know. Obviously, we are now owned and operated by ESL Face It Group. Um, and with them laying off people, I have to pose a question. Should we be concerned? Are we, are we worried about um, maybe production being a little bit uh, harder this year so i think for one one would do well to differentiate between layoffs happening here and the ones ha happening in the wider gaming industry for sure. a simple reason sure. and i would in, they're not completely indivisible but even like in the case of activision blizzard and microsoft mm -hmm. i think merger layoffs and wider industry impact and efficiency layoffs to right size um mm. are different in function right one is trying to find an economic baseline to work under the other just has a lot of overlapping fat based on sure. people like doing the same job that can realistically just has overlap right and then there might be the simplification of like well isn't there twice as much work oh not really right like if you have a household and you move in together with someone, you're not paying literally everything twice, right? Like you're, there's a, some efficiency uh, factor where like you're only paying for, I don't know, the toilet cleaner like 60% more than you sure. were because, when you were single because you're not essentially, you know, cleaning that much more in comparison, right? And mm -hmm. that mapped onto the, this very concept. There are just functions within it where there's a decent overlap. And by making the company work more efficiently, you can get to a baseline that achieves the same goals with less personnel over a wider range. Also, having double ups that are no longer necessary. Right now, mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we've seen that uh, layoffs have impacted esports broadcasts across the industry recently i yeah. think what yes or efg is trying to go for is to make their especially their broadcasting team not the broadcast talent but actually the the production to mm -hmm. be much more you know one team andy type of things yeah. i recently heard a rumor of folks uh interviewing and being asked if they could imagine, like they're interviewing for a CRS role, they're interviewing, uh, like they're they're wondering if they can also have any knowledge of other games such as Overwatch. Yeah, multi games. Yeah. So, unfortunately, when, much like the casting thing, you would have to say if a production crew for everyone else, but the no, actually probably a vast majority of the people working that stuff, replay viewing, uh, observing camera yeah. Yeah. directing is not one-to-one yeah. -one transitional skill across these games they're very unique to each other and there's only so much overlapping skill so if you're putting the same guy on cs2 as the guy you put on overwatch 2 that's going to be a problem in almost every single production role right 100 yeah 
and it takes a like everyone knows that keeping up with multiple esports is very challenging as a task. So, if your industry can allow specialists, the the quality of your product goes up for sure. There is mm -hmm. something to be said about gaining from the knowledge as an undeveloped scene that Overwatch is in many uh, regards and getting to learn from that knowledge in personal union in many cases if that was to be the case in ter terms of the fusion. But generally speaking, you would have to say that the peak of the product, of the production, is likely to come down due to uh, yeah, of these course. layoffs. Right? Um, this, is, this is a bunch of people that... The, the way that I'm unpacking this prior to um, to quoting uh, Cecilia de Anastasio, if I'm saying her last name correctly, forgive me, um, is that, you know, there's there's a bunch of uh, people now wearing hats that they wouldn't normally be wearing, and there's going to be a workflow type, you know, funnel that just makes things harder to work through, to pass, to there, there is a a bottleneck now. Um, I, I would imagine. I feel like a lot of this stuff, and and I think you're right that you know it, it is important to clarify that this is not just a merger thing because as the article that Eric has pulled up, it's been you know two years after the fact. This isn't you know just a, a, a an extra right. fat type of deal. This you know to quote Cecilia, um, she has a quote from uh, Bloomberg here. Uh, Co chief executive officers Greg Levine and. Colo Maestro wrote that the cuts are intended to support, quote, the sustainability, growth ambitions, and profitability, end quote. The job losses will be in the hundreds, according to the person to a person with knowledge of the matter. So this is again just a a knock on effect of uh, you know, let esports winter. You know, shit's tight. People gotta cut stuff. Um and you know, also, like, it, it doesn't impact us. I think some of, some of it really didn't go over well with me. There was there was a line in there going like, "Oh yeah, I hope you we can all see it as the matter of efficiency in order to adapt to the challenges." Okay, sure. If you're making yeah. the argument for sustainability and therefore like for everyone else of the remaining eighty five percent to feel some security in their jobs, fair enough. But like there was some communication in there that just like basically said like you should say see this as a positive thing while everyone was receiving this and they hadn't laid off anyone if you're one of those mm -hmm. laid off guys what a what a message what a slap to, in the face yeah. like talk about announcing your pregnancy on grandma's funeral what the what are you doing yeah. dude a um, little little tone deaf yeah it's it, it, just like of course if your job is not on the line and you're just really looking at spreadsheets basically like devoid of all humanity mm -hmm. and have sniffed enough like or lacked oxygen uh, in the upper echelons of your ivory tower for too long I guess those parts of the brain don't fun function anymore to that degree but come on nope. man like you don't even have to do this shit anymore you're not owned by like you're not publicly traded as far as you like you don't have to dress it up for the shareholders i doubt fucking your new owners re even read that shit or care about that message i don't know <laughs> like it's just such a weird fucking pr speech um that should like sit well with absolutely nobody i don't know if it's like yeah what, what to add like. to that sentiment to add there um the reason why I, I I thought this was important to bring up in the in, in the docket was the idea that, you know, we did see the OBS team you know, be laid off. You know, some people obviously went on to work for Team 4, I believe. Um, but there are a lot of passionate folks from the Overwatch League itself, either working behind the scenes that did not get, you know, full time employment um, that, you know, I think we're hoping that face it would be a potential home. Now, with layoffs being hit, to me, that signals that a lot of those potential or hopeful jobs that some of these people could be applying for aren't, aren't, aren't there. Or they're being Maybe, kind yeah. of set up for fail. Like yeah. you said, being asked to apply a multi-game, you know, knowledge where there, there isn't any. Um, and and that's, that's tough. Look, the, the one thing I, th I feel like sometimes we would grow from knowing... I think there's a very heavy chance that if you look at 2012, 2013, 
combined that ESL is still plus in employees from EFG based on where they sure. started. Meaning sure. in, in those two years since the merger, they probably, I would guess, have picked up more people than they let go here. Okay? Yeah. That is a very different message. And the, the message that I admittedly was um, communicated was that they planned to pick up even more people if it was possible. Mm. Sometimes I figure there's like this in the gaming scene or it, really in any industry where there's a downturn, there's this expectation, the social pressure of like not being the guy that doesn't cut uh, because everyone else is doing it. Sort of like a sure. right, like a um, peer pressure situation because you don't want to be the idiot, right? Uh, no. That and it, it works almost on all social levels. So, um, yeah, it's of course not saying that's necessarily the case here. I, I think that there's a very real chance that they just had too many employees, or rather, like not the right folks, the right talent. Um, the the severance package. I'm not sure what it looks like. They said there was something as to help sure. others transition. Like, look, the thing that sucks about being laid off, most of it is the insecurity of the next job yeah. that comes after. In a perfect economy, you would just find a perfect job and like be it connected be to move. the next. And then yep. being laid off is actually not a problem. Because in mm-hmm. the ideal best of cases, let's say like um, the all-knowing truth machine gets to allocate you to a new job that n- maximizes the, uh, the company's utility and your personal happiness and fulfillment, being laid off it would actually be great because every layoff would mean you're getting to a place that's better for everyone. It's a win-win. Right. right? The, the potential of a win-loss is the problem. Potential, the, the uncertainty is the problem. The lost paychecks are the problem. So the closer you can come to you know, making that transition as painless as possible, yes, the, the shock, the system shock of being laid off is awful. Um, but really, if there was any more security in being picked up and being helped to be picked up, um, that, that significantly lessens the blow. And I think co- companies that help with that transition, that should be, should be accurately um, taken in. I think the way Riot did it is very different to the way Activision Blizzard did it. And mm. that should be recognized in some fashion. Well said. Well said. It is, it is part of the, the news docket. It is something to bring up. Um, we will see. Well, I'm sure hear about this as, you know, uh, more information is disseminated from, you know, maybe individuals affected. See uh, how close they were to our side of uh, the fence when it comes to EFG. So we will have to see. Speaking of broadcast, we do have the talent announcements. Um, and some unannouncements. Um, uh, quite a few people, uh, former Overwatch League commentary folks, posting that they um, did not get an offer. Um, former host of the show, Avril, um, from my understanding, being one of them as well. Lemon, Leg Day, a lot of friends of the show, uh, not getting reached out to. However, um, some interesting names popping up on the Asian side of the broadcast. Um, Wolf is back. I may need to create a beef with him to harken back to goats we will have to see that would make my inner child very happy wolf coming for you watch out uh hexagrams as well returning to the broadcast as well as 9k which was a a shocker to me uh yes any anything to to break down here well the big one is of course avril missing out um correct i felt like i looked at that like I, I knew in advance that like there had mm-hmm. been a selection. I had known for uh, about Wolf for a minute, and of course, like the pattern in many ways was just like these are dudes local to yeah. production studio. Now I don't know if that's true for hexagrams, and if it is, then yeah. fair enough. If fair not, play. yeah. If not, Oof. that's kind of crazy. We got, some, Honestly, we got some explaining to do. Like I feel like the selection. 
even given community sentiment, is fair when you really value locality. If you have everyone remote casting anyway, then snubbing Avril is crazy. Yeah. If And this is no... Because I feel like this can be taken a couple different ways. This is no slight to Hex, but let's let's remove some name tags and let's just look at this, you know, f- fact of the matter. He's missed how many years on the on the broadcast team? Yeah, since season he's out since season season three, I think. All right, or season four. Okay, I'm not sure. Quite a few years missing. He did production for one or two seasons. Obviously, he definitely that's, wasn't employed that's... since season six, I think. Fair play. And Fair once play. again, like a legend of the scene, right? Like not denying that. Yeah, at all. of course. Is, you know, I, I'm approaching this hopefully with the reverence that I feel like it needs. However, if you're going to tell me that one of the best, and I don't know roles here, I'm, you know, unfamiliar with unknown, obviously, you know, been doing quite a bit on the production side of things. I think did the Swiss stages with G Clef. Um, and, and, I think he did StarCraft stuff. Eric, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I know that name from somewhere and I can't remember exactly where I, where it's tickling my brain. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that there is anybody outside of maybe Wolf, um, outside of... Even then, it's, it's tough uh, to do color and to analyze the game that Avril does. Um, so if you're... Yeah, if, if, if somebody is phoning in um, and is zooming in to uh, these, these games to commentate, and it's not, you know, the pick of the litter. I, I that does rub me the wrong way. That is a little weird, to say the least. Yeah, I honestly like in my mind. Okay, this might be glazing, but I think he's like number three in talents I would secure if I was in the talent hiring position. You gotta get Uber. I think that's unquestionable. Sure. With Uber comes Matt, and then Matt is also because. He did so much uh, with production. That's a double whammy in that case. Yeah. And then it's Avril for me in terms of presence, in terms of clarity, in terms of knowledge of the scene, uh, in, in terms of adaptability. I think Avril could very likely also do a... He, he, in my opinion, like he has the best play-by-play of all the... Um, color play-by-play? Com- commentators. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. He has sick ad libs as well. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, Very he has the voice player. to do it as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, to do that is, is pretty nasty. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know how the, like, what, what the uh, factors were in the decision yeah. that came down to it in the end. Um, locality, like, look, if, if Hex is just like there. He shows now, up in stage, it's like, okay, fair play, you know? It's, it's, you know, it's, he's local, it's cheap, it makes a lot of sense. That's just not information that we're privy also, to. Also, he can technically, right, he ha- also has a double chops of production and yeah, uh, shot casting, so fair play. Um, I still think, like, look, there's no, I hate that, usually, like, I'm not one to take part in the, uh, direct evaluation of talent against each other sure, because yeah. theoretically like, already... the, the argument could just be like just extend your cast. It doesn't like the 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 fact that it's only six English and it, I say only six is pretty big for yeah. uh like a, a, a scope of that size. You would actually have to say that I think it's how many are the uh, nine, eleven, seventeen folks on the entire casting crew is pretty sizable. Right, you yeah, you gotta gotta give it to WDG uh, having that many people on staff, especially the Korean casting talent. I feel like they kept the entire crew together. Um, I'm not sure if I'm if anyone's missing there, but yeah, like it's it's yeah, it, it sucks being Aus- Australia, but that Avril isn't on either an AU or Asia is fucking wild. I think the the copium from uh, the Same leadership Costa, position. The Just yep. That there's there's another name that is that is blatantly missing. Um, which we'll get to. Uh, the the copium from the leadership from I think OWCS is that I I feel like they've also teased because of 
certain talent and their prior obligations, um, they probably will be taking on people in contract roles to like fill in. And it will obviously likely have to be remote. So that's like the that's my maybe that's my copium. Maybe that's the copium that they're peddling as well. So many of the American broadcasts have to be remote. Like that's that's not an excuse. I'm not sure if you can. Yeah. So, OK, so of course, it's local. I think Johnny's local. Jake, I'm not. Sure. No, Jake is also local. I think Jake's local, yeah. Uh, Uber and Matt. I'm pretty sure. I don't think Necra is local. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, who did they tell me? Wait, let me see. We we did obviously. Talk... Yeah. As you as you parse through that, obviously you you have some multi game people here. Obviously, Uber being on VCT currently and probably likely being courted by Riot to do more. Um, we'll have to miss some time. Um, Necra also is very prominent in other esports and other, you know, broadcast fields. So she'll probably likely have to miss time. Um, and I feel like that's who they're kind of looking at. Soby as well has been featured on, uh, VCT as well. So maybe we'll get some guest hosts. Who knows? Um, you know, th that's the, I, I feel like that's what they're trying to peddle as hope. Uh, maybe to some of these folks and maybe even to some of the fans that are, are, are a little upset that, you know, people like Custa, people like Lemon some a lot of the contenders talent that have been you know waiting to try to get an opportunity um just haven't um and that's what they're going to try to offer them is you know oh well we can get you in when these guys are out and it's doesn't ever feel good um and and my heart kind of breaks for them uh because it is such a a skeleton crew um this does kind of answer one of my questions when it comes to the the existence of an analyst desk in today's esports, you know, consumption climate. Um, obviously, reinforced and Jake being listed as analysts, having a host. Typically, I think that would uh, that would lean me to believe that there is a desk to hopefully break things down. What that desk will look like in light of Riot kind of uh, butchering their analyst desk and becoming more of a, a content hub uh, is is TBD. We will see what what this looks like on uh, what is it March eighth, N A and E M E A starts. I will beat that into you until you remember. Um, so it's at least good news there for anybody who's interested in the the X's and O's of things. Hopefully, we will get some kind of out you know analysis. Um, but you know my heart does go out to those individuals that didn't get reached out to, didn't you know weren't weren't given the opportunity and. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously co-streaming is not the same, um, but I think there is, uh, I think there's a lot to be to be gained there for for those that uh, want to participate in that. So here's hoping. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's going to be questionable if uh, co-streaming is going to be feasible for a lot of these guys, right? Like it's a just a very different skill set. Fortunately, I think Avril is a For little sure. bit better than edit than others. Yeah, he's done it before. I think he could slot in if he wanted to. That's the big question I think for him is like, does do you want to keep doing this? Like, it's been forever. You know, now you've gotten your opportunity ripped away from you. Do you want to keep kicking around here? Like, I I I wouldn't blame you if you were just like, ah, eh, fuck this shit, I'm out. Like, uh, now is my time. There's this weird effect now in esports where, like, I feel like in the past it was very desirable for leaks to have your guy be exclusive and be like the face yeah. of your I think like that flipped. I don't think you can do that anymore. No, no, not just it, you can't do it anymore. I think it's actively sought out by yeah. companies to look, if I'm Riot, I'm looking at my track record of who's pulling where. I'm yeah. totally confident that the guys that are casting Overwatch can siphon even more people into Valorant because yep. Brandon Sideshow did that shit. 100% did that shit. Even if they did that Brent shit, Sasha... but they also have become, you know, quite the the the, the monolithic force in, in Valorant. So it's not just that they sure. were brought over to like siphon people over, but that you know their their talent is. But that's making them just float. Like, like because Overwatch oh, is good, right? Like that's no, of course, yes. So without a doubt, like the, the yeah the 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 games are. I, I think there's there's a decent chance that if you like. 
what especially Satchel and Bren brought to the table, that you will enjoy the vibe of Valorant, of Valorant broadcast. Yeah. Um, the spirit of Prahlad Chat in many ways just carried over. Especially, like, if they... Honestly, like, if Riot could just, like, you know, bring even Johnny on, catch some of that old magic there. Like, sure. have the... Um, even though I would say Pletcher Valorant already has a very good vibe without going there. The guys mm-hmm. there that are doing, doing very well. So, um, but yeah, like, I feel like there's cross-promotional stuff, especially for the bigger leagues or the ones that believe they can siphon off stuff. Uh, from the other leagues, that's very welcome. The those smaller leagues probably do not have the resources to offer exclusivity in their contracts and adequately monetarily compensate those folks. So yeah, that's it. Feels like a big shift that now you're kind of even pre-selecting for folks that are not just one game Andes, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, here in this case, not too many aren't. So it's just Uber Zoe. Not sure if Matt is looking into CDL again. Of course, Necra with the Pokemon stuff, but like... Does also do TFT. She's, she's kind of all over the place. Right, right. So Jaws and Johnny and Jake, I'm not sure of. They, those guys yeah. felt like they were more like entrenching in, in Overwatch esports trying to get their content creation game up or their coaching uh, revenue streams. So they, they took a different route, but right. they, yeah, I think uh, it's also pretty smart of them to just keep the Pletcher crew around, which, by the way, would have been another boon for Avril uh, being kept on, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, ideally, of course, the, the ideal solution is to just have one more casting pair. Yeah. Um I'm not entirely sure how the broadcast will be structured. If so he will just host and what the desk elements will look like. Yeah. Two casting pairs for a season is pretty rough. Like keep in mind That's we're rough, three yeah. in in Asia, right? Yep. Uh so I assume that will be casting duties taken over by uh either Johnny or Jake in some capacity who've shown that they can. Mhm. Um Otherwise, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to probably mix and mash a, little, a bunch. Am I also crazy to, or maybe this has even been announced at this point? Um, the broadcast days are pretty slim, so it it's not like you need a lot of people, right? Like, uh, well, let's see. So it's two, four, um. Live math. Wait. That can't be... Ah, okay, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Um, so yeah, we're looking at, like, not that many, for sure. Like, yeah. 50 broadcast days the entire year, right? Yeah. Uh, that's not a ton, admittedly, oh, yes. Like, maybe three games a day? If that, like, it's, it's doable for two casting duos. Yes. There will be time missed, and that's where I, I totally agree that the analysts will probably be shuffled in. Um, also, they're squeezing the, the most out of what it means to have a day rate. You know, day rate, usually, sure. like, you show up, you cast two games, that's your ga- day rate. Yeah. Now yeah. these fuckers are made to cast in you into NA, which might be, I don't know, six games or whatever, right? Like, presumably. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what the hell is going on there, but... And then, of course, yep. into offline. Th- oh, I just confused uh, because of May flipping over into June for Dallas. Um, so that's going to be interesting going forward. Yeah, but like, it it feels like there's a lot of Overwatch esports going on just because like globally there is. Yeah, but r- really, it's really not. Like the, the the if you're just following like one scene, fifty broadcast days, not that much. Yep, yep, yep. A lot of, uh, if you do want to keep up with Overwatch esports, it is going to be a lot of co stream watching, a lot of watching player POVs. It, it, there, there has never been uh, a better time to create like a hub, um, for news, I think. Um, 
that's maybe something we can explore if that's something maybe you'd be interested more interested in um maybe we can integrate that by the way it's more like 30 jesus okay yeah that's it's pretty few there's there's not a lot going on um so there's there's definitely some some footage out there that will be unseen by the masses so we will we will have to tackle that as it progresses that being said the schedule we are coming up on games you guys need to understand when there is games japan has started we will talk about japan kind of we'll be using them as a case study to talk about the meta but korea starts on march 1st we do have the teams that have progressed through the Swiss stage. We will also be talking about them. Stay tuned. Um, EMEA and NA start on March 8th. Swiss stage starts on March 1st. So that'll be the first taste probably for co-streams, um, from player POV streams, all that kind of stuff. Content will probably begin March 1st. However, live broadcasting for the OWCS will probably not or will not begin until the 8th. So set those in your calendars, March 1st. March 8th, those are basically when OWCS kind of begins for the vast majority of, of our listeners. Um, that being said, it has technically begun with Japan, um, and I will be looking at a specific team, and I haven't necessarily gone too deep because, uh, let's face it, I'm not, you know, not giga keen on APAC as a, as a region, um, excluding Korea. But Team Veril does consist of... The entirety of Team Japan from last year's World Cup, and they were semi-competitive. Okay. So using them as a case study, they did play today. They did ace their game against Hayabusa Gaming. And we're playing quite a bit of Doomfist, quite a bit of Zenyatta, Tracer, a little bit of Hamster in there, a little Ball, a little Junker Queen as well. So this is, it. if we're going to use this as a... A, a the tiniest little hint of maybe what the meta could be in Asia. I'm not going to comment on what the meta could be in EMEA or NA because let's face it, Europe's kind of crazy pilled and they might still force Ryan. And NA is kind of a, a grab bag. Well, we don't even know who's, but that's that's up in the air. But if we're going to let's let's for discussion's sake assume that maybe Team Veril is the canary in the coal mine to signal maybe this is a little bit more of an open meta when it comes to tank can support picks whereas dps are a little bit more tracer focused with some map specific picks is there you know is there maybe a team from korea outside of falcons uh that you could maybe look at and consider being quite good mm, you mean germany or just in japan uh, I, I, again, using, using Japan and their kind of teasing of the meta and translating that into maybe some of these Korean teams in Korea, like, who do you think in Korea outside of Falcons could be good mm. now that we kind of have an idea of the meta? I mean, every, I think like, yeah, as, as, uh, Eric's showing here, like every lip team is forever going to be good. That had back sure. is cranked. The He's saying is- again, coming off a good year. He said, yeah, I don't mind. He said, jumping in bags is crazy to me. There's something, <laughs> it's got to be something about these boys that I don't know. Yeah. Because I know, yep. like, Lip wouldn't tolerate scrubs, right? Like, but then again. But, let, me, let me raise you one better. Would Moon tolerate scrubs? Yes. Reveal the, reveal the staff, Eric. Re- 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 Scooby-Doo this, motherfucker. It's Pavane and Moon. Right, have they been no, notorious put, scrub scrub uh, like tolerators? Yes. Uh, Flatter main tank, Joe. It's true. Janus. Oh. Okay. Anus, more like. So this is all like the- they did get shoe. Okay, like the support line is a redeeming factor. I think the DPS picks do play in their favor. This is for Team Whack. Their tanks live up to the to the moniker. I will say their tanks are whack. That's the joke, folks. Moving on, Team Genesis. I'm. It, it's it's okay, right? I, I feel like Did that didn't something. Wait, didn't didn't something fall apart here? 
What? I vaguely remember Choice One leaving or something. I'm not 100% sure what happened there. I read something. I'm not too sure. I'll super sleuth. Continue. But, like, on paper, that's not a bad team. Like, that's one of the better ones, oh. right? Serious punching power. I mean, you can't go wrong with a decay. I, th I feel like this is the first time that Choice of One's been on a real team for if that the last three years. Case, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if he's still here again, there, there is definitely, I mean, this had to have been updated since Swiss or the tournament stages. So correct. I would imagine this is probably still correct. Um, I think Kellen is definitely an eyebrow raise flanked by Kalios. I don't think he'll be seeing too much play time. So this is more of the Kellen show. <laughs> Terumaka on support it's not super inspiring but maybe the DPS can get it over the line um yeah it, it, it could be interesting it could be interesting um team falcons obviously I think is up, like by and far the front runner I, I this is this is a dream team plus Sir Majed if I've ever seen one um yeah I, I mean you can't not put them number one right who sorry Team Falcons? Yeah, no, gotta be one. Yeah. Gotta be one. Gotta there, be there's one not even the much to be said. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Like the team to be the leading team for the OWCS. Yes. Um from the gamer, FTG, Flora Alfie, Bellosaria, Bernard, Violet, Finn. Interesting. I'm sniffing some some potential here. I'm I'm liking what I'm smelling. I like me some Violet. I like me some Alfie. Bellos Rhea, I have opinions on, but sometimes kind of turns up a little bit. Flora, I think, had a semi-okay start to the year last year. I feel like that's going to be, like, the vibe I, for a lot of these teams, where it's like, I like bits and pieces, I could live without the rest, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, think I, I feel like... They're, nobody they're... so far has missed a tracer. However, I think... Genesis is probably the weakest when it comes to tanks. I don't know if I'm like super jazzed to see Kellen on Doom or Ball or Winston, right? Like, obviously, his best heroes, but even then, it's like, ooh. So I, I want Kellen. Kellen that much. Like, I would, the, the thing is, honestly, I would take Kellen over uh, John Bidden Max. Max. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely more proven. That's for goddamn sure. Yeah. Um, moving on to Yeti. You want to talk about proven? We'll have to see. Uh, Knife oh. and Viper, formerly of. Paris? I kind of like Maybe? that team. I'm I'm looking forward to that. like this is just like team newcomer. Or yeah, th this does feel like the with irony. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's irony plus uh, everybody with a chip on their shoulder. Yes. Knife and Viper coming in with like the Vegas drama. Dong yeah. Hat coming in from maybe getting into fist fights at Atlanta, who knows. Um Bliss kind of just being the the quiet um like semi pro Rosa? like yeah, like Coming in kind of quiet. I feel like everybody was like hyped on him out of contenders, came in on his rookie season, did you know well. Um it's it's a team that probably has some sleeper power for sure. Is it this is I feel like this is the biggest question for Dong Hack is like, can you actually live up without having the best support line ever uh flanking you? We'll have to see. I like Bliss and Irony, I don't think it's too bad, but uh, they're not Chio and Fielder. It's, you know, not mince words. Yeah. Um, Fate and Fleda co-coaching co is hilarious, by the way. Oh, it's it's Moon's feast fucking... And, feast and Famine on Tank in Season <laughs> 6. <laughs> Just coming together wanting to coach an over which seems kind of based. I, I would love nothing more to see both of those guys continue their careers as being successful coaches you know taking this team of youngsters and you know doing something magical that'd be very cool right. a la the next team on the list uh runaway roster being profit zest profit with like the you mm -hmm. know being the this profit not profit um obviously being retired um zest mag legion and vigilante solid team I'm giving you, like, if it was the real profit, by the way, Runner should have done that. Should've. That team would feel very differently to me. Yeah. I see that. I, and maybe this is just who he, who he was paired up against some of the, the games last year. But I feel like Profet 
never really landed for me. I feel like Profit kind of dumpstered him, and I I never he never he escaped like one good game me. against uh, yeah. So, but it's 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 pretty clear to me that like this kid is an absolute scrim warrior because he's getting like recruited to like good teams consistently, or at yeah. least you know since his debut. Um, so there's something that isn't being translated, but that is the big question mark. Is like last year was not good for him, and he got like kind of hard benched if memory serves. And now you're playing up against, you know, the potential of Zest Bag coming off of his best year after escaping Washington and Lee Jagon and Vigilante, who I feel like this is going to be a revelation for a lot of people that Vigilante's like good. Everybody's like talked about it. Yeah. That backline is crazy. It's it's cracked. And I think the the biggest third best in the world probably. I think this has potential to argue for number two, and that's because of Lee Jae gone. And it's it, you want to talk about feast or famine? I, I feel like after doing the ranking episodes, it's it's been it's it's cemented the fact that Lee Jae gone is either going to fucking int for your team, or you're going to rally behind him and let him ta- like taunt all the aggro and just let the style of your team be dictated by Lee Jae gone's feed. You know, like you're either going to play behind him, or he is going to fucking destroy your team from the inside out mm-hmm. so that depends on what runaway wants to do here um we will have to see somehow some way runner always ends up having a a main support that just is the the soul and body of this team and i think lee Jagon fits that bill um in more ways than one but in different ways than it passed i love that he just got those boys back you know it's, yeah, hundred percent. That's that. Wouldn't, those are the, the good old boys. Wouldn't Lee surprise me if Mac actually flourished even more once again? Like under hundred percent. Keep yeah. in mind, it's just just runner. It's also flower win. Uh, presumably mm-hmm. still involved in some way, and her touch on that team is also during that. I think when Mac really shined, runner was actually doing his military military service, and believe. Uh, Flower was taking care of that roster, and that's when Mac was presumed to be, yeah, if not the best tank in the world, one of the best. Yeah, I so, mean, he was like our everybody's like rookie of the season coming in, like that yeah. was the guy to get, like, yeah. and and it just never landed. Yeah. Um, I think people are beginning to like realize what we were all been talking about. It's not just us, you know. This was, you know, to completely remove bias. This is Plat Chat's talking about it. You know, uh, I think ATP probably had some videos about, you know, how good Mag was like this is, you know, if there was ever pundits in the space, Mag was the guy. And now we're starting to get back to where that that potential lied. Right. Um, Runaway could be good. It, it, the big question is around profit, right? Everything else checks out. Every, I love everything else. Everything else is fantastic. Could argue for second best. <sighs> Do we does Zest have a tracer? Do I remember that? I feel like he does. If, yeah, he does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He played a shitload last season. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I I slept on Asia for some time, so mm. I'm I'm gonna have to defer. To I'll, be fair, I'll, that's sleeping time for you guys. So. It is. It is. Yeah. I tried to catch the the reruns as best I could, but Soul Infernal uh, is is not ringing many bells right now. Alas, Poker Face coming in with the ugliest of all the logos. Uh, Becky Proud Finale, DPS really? Trio. I disagree. I think so. It's a little, it's giving, it's giving um, Prince. I don't know how else to say it. It's giving like very artsy. It's, it's kind of trying a little too hard. I feel like the, the top left thing just doesn't, like the... the... <laughs> The, the letters or whatever, like the the glasses or whatever it is, that's too know. much. It was just like yeah. the bottom right corner feature of they've the two had faces. better. They've had better logos. Yeah. I uh, not my favorite, but regardless, Becky proud finale, Peppy Jasmine, Faith simple, Iris. I love everything. Nick's Jasmine, please. D- sorry, what? Jasmine the tank. Yeah, what, what? I just don't think they're very good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I know next to nothing of, about them and neither about Peppy. Yeah, same. I, I think just a flex tank player if memory serves. Um, I think the support line's great. I think the DPS line is... It's okay. 
It's okay. Doubling up on every roll is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, we'll see. Not too know. high on them. Pretty sure not going to finish top four. Yeah, we'll see. no, no, don't think so either. Uh, Sin Prisa, however, uh, Aid Argon Milgaru to you, Hyunjae and Lee Soo Min. That might be worse. I think. Really, you think so? Yeah. I don't know too much about Argon. I remember Aid being quite potent on the hit scans. Sure. Is that going to be a factor or not? It depends. I think to you probably will start. Yeah. At least I would hope. Neil Garu does look like a ball player, so maybe they'll just rally around him. Hard to say. I think they could be meta dependent. I, I just don't know anything about Argon. If his tracer can hold up, great. That's a big question, though. You know, you're you're playing up against the likes of Decay, Choice Awan, Saying Lip, Proper Stalker, like some of the literally the best tracers ever. So if you're gonna if you're gonna swim, now would be the time. Um, Who's and then best of crew. Sky, Wan Sumin, Candle, She's and Mobug. Okay. From Vegas as well. Yeah, cool. I think it's Mobogi's <laughs> team, Simprisa, So I believe so, yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Vesta Crew, who includes zero people who I'm familiar with. Do you know Minute, Dart, Gurren, no Off, idea, no. or Dagon? No? Okay. The only so, thing that Vesta Crew be does to me is that I wonder where Happy is. Nobody, nobody's going to get that. Yeah. If Harsha listens to this, maybe he'll maybe he'll chuckle. If you know Baroy's out there, you know it's still in the ether. Maybe he'd get a smile out of it. But like nobody's gonna remember that Happy went by Vesta yeah. and got fucking giga benched or perma fucking banned because he boosted like a an animal. Yeah. Now th this is yeah, like that the fact that he kind of quietly went into the night. Presumably, I'm not sure if yeah. he even played the qualifiers. It's pretty wild. But also kind of cool to see. Like I, I hope that there's some life into these newcomer teams. Where, you know, don't know yeah. much, especially Vesta Crew. Seems like sort of like an off, offshoot without a zero. Yeah, there's no former out player in there, or not even really like ones that were projected to go up. I think. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's kind of exciting. That's uh, hopefully they surprise in some fashion. Yeah. But it's definitely going to be fun to uh, have some new faces to talk about um, to kind of chart their careers and, and see some new stories being told. Um, whether or not they will be good, we will we will just have to see. It does feel very top heavy, um, to say the least. Um, I think just by I, I don't think we have a strong enough meta read to be able to say um, some of the top teams just yet. Obviously, Japan is not like the foremost authority on all things Overwatch, um, so we will have to see. But I do, I do think that like Veril is hinting towards like a more ex widely accepted, you know, more mobile front line with a tracer supports feel a little bit more map dependent. I think there are more map dependent DPS picks as well. Obviously, you know, I think Circuit being in the pool. Let me double check and not sound like a complete and utter. Had ass, yeah. Circuit Royal Dorado, Jibby could be a little hit scan centric. I think I saw one team in Japan running some Cassidy with like a slower backline of like Bap and Brig. I think Bap or Lucio, something like that. Kind of playing protect the Cassidy a little bit, but I I really don't typically think that that's like ideal. Um, so we'll see. It it is remain to be seen. Again, remember March 1st, March 8th, that's when games begin globally. March 1st, Korea and uh, Western Coast Streams and POVs, and then the West begins on the 8th. Anything else, Yiska? Anything else coming down the pipeline? Um, just the, uh, the video that I talked about earlier, about the retirements. I'm also making some projections because I believe retirements aren't over. There's another additional factor that has to be considered and that will hit uh, coming up. Then um, I'll try to continue my interviews. It's been tough getting folks on. 
I hope like sort of champions crystallize in each region as to be able to interview the, those guys more uh, mm-hmm. and attract some some sort of audience there. But yeah, no. Otherwise, like looking forward to a long weekend, and then after that, the grind starts with the uh, OWCS season kicking off. Hell yeah. What about you? Um, playing WoW, cooking, doing a lot of cooking. You still um, play the RTS? What's it called? Stormgate is... Um, they're, they, they've rolled back. The open beta was just for the, the Steam Fest. All right. Um, and it was good. It was, it was genuinely a lot of fun. Um, doing quite a few interviews. Um, one coming down the pipeline with, uh, you know, a... a a prominent player within Stormgate, um, Hydra, if anybody remembers, not. Also, speaking of, we can talk about after the show, but Blast from the Past, your WoW Hydra keeps popping up in my YouTube oh, really? algorithm. <laughs> yeah, and he's like out here doing stuff. I'm like, wait, I know that name. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting. Um, yeah, doing some WoW stuff, doing some cooking, trying to figure out this esports shit. Um, but yeah, nothing crazy. Chill. Right. Right. So. Yeah, uh, by next week, next show will be on the 6th, hopefully. Um, we will have a better idea of what NA looks like. We'll probably have a better idea of what the meta looks like because Korea starts this Friday, being the 1st of March. That's when Korea starts. Remember this. Um, so we will have far more to talk about next week. We will be watching these games. I will hold Guest Guy Gunpoint, and hopefully we'll have a guest. So. Till then, stay safe. We love you all very much. Um, and we will see you with some some better better days coming ahead. OWCS starts today. Peace.